Monterey's sewer system was installed back in the 1800s, and some of the pipes underground are more than 100 years old and in need of major repair and replacement. The city, its residents and businesses are all going to have to help foot the bill, but the city has found a way to help ease the impact over time. Most of us don't know or imagine what happens to our wastewater as it flows down our sinks, toilets, and bathtubs. Out of sight, out of mind is the general attitude. So the city of Monterey uh, is in charge of our sewer system and that consists of the gravity, the mains out in the street, and seven pump stations. The city of Monterey does not treat the sewage. The sewage is treated by the Monterey Regional Water Pollution Control Agency. So the way the sewer system in Monterey works is quite simple. Uh, you have your house and then connected to your house or your apartment is a sewer lateral, which is the responsibility of the property owner. That sewage then flows into a, um, a sewer main, which is the city's responsibility, and those are generally located under the streets. And it all flows by gravity, and eventually it reaches a low point somewhere on the earth. Uh, oftentimes it's near the ocean. And at that point, the sewage needs to be pumped because um, the sewage is ultimately treated out in Marina at the Monterey Regional Water Pollution Control Agency sewage treatment plant. We rely on these sewer mains and pumps to successfully transport our waste away from the city and the bay. But what happens when they fail? The city of Monterey uh, does unfortunately have sewer spills. In 2010, we had about 25 spills. Those are both from the public sewer system and also from private laterals. Uh, one of those spills was actually pretty significant. It was 10,000 gallons and got into a creek. Fortunately, due to the quick work of our crews, they prevented the sewage from getting into the ocean. But um, we can't always count on uh, those kinds of rapid responses to these, these incidents. And uh, so we need to make improvements to the sewer system to help reduce those number of sewer overflows. Monterey's sewers are showing their age. The city of Monterey has over 102 miles of sewer pipelines and seven pump stations. And 60% of it is over 80 years old. Locked under our streets and neighborhoods, we can be blind to their deterioration. Um, many parts of our sewer system are well over 100 years old. So like everything as it ages, things wear out. Most people probably think, well, it's just carrying water and sewage. Why would it wear out? Well, like I said before, uh, roots can get into these pipes and roots are probably one of the main causes of problems. Um, throughout the years that these pipes are in the ground, other utility companies work on those rights of way and they work around our sewer mains. Sometimes they can cause damage. Um, some of our pipes are fairly shallow and so as the cars and the trucks go over the tops of them, they can break them apart. So generally speaking, it's a matter of age and wear that occurs uh, on these sewer lines that's causing the problems. The city of Monterey decided to send special equipment and cameras underground to assess their condition. Well, back in, starting in 2000, we actually inspected all of our sewer lines using a closed circuit television camera. Uh, and from the data that we uh, gleaned from those inspections, we then assigned a letter grade of A to F to every one of those pipes. Uh, we also inspected all the manholes and we've inspected the sewer pump stations. Um, so what we're going to be doing as a, as a result of that is that we are anticipating um, a $16.8 million project which will uh, focus on the F pipes, the D pipes, and a portion of the C pipes as well as the manholes and the pump stations that need to have work done on them, bringing all of the system up to an A, B, or C grade. Failure to treat this problem can have dire consequences for our region's health, economy and environment. Well, when, when sewage spills outside of the pipes, um, there, there's a number of things that can result from that. Uh, one of the first is exposure to humans and, and the pathogens that are in that sewage. So obviously we don't want to have sewage in our creeks, in our lakes, uh, in the ocean itself. Um, the other is that there's uh, harmful contaminants in sewage, chemicals and other kinds of contaminants that can harm the sea life. Uh, some of the pathogens that are in sewage can infect uh, sea life as well as humans. So we really do want to 
want to protect the environment, but we also want to protect the economy of the area by reducing these sewer spills. You know, the, the, the cost to uh, the region and to the city from sewer spills is, is really unaccountable. The bad press that will result from that could cost the area, you know, millions of dollars of lost revenue when you, when you look at the tourism industry. Not too many years ago, one of our neighboring uh, cities had some serious problems with sewer overflows and it was the subject of the morning and evening news and unfortunately it cast a very bad light on, on that city and on our region as a whole. With repairs, replacements and rehabilitation estimated at almost $17 million, a sanitary sewer rate study recommended that a small sewer rate increase be enacted. Rates will now be based upon the amount of sewage produced. For example, beginning in October of this year, the city's monthly rates for a single-family house will increase by a little over $5, gradually over the next five years. These new rates will still only place us in the middle of neighboring community rates. So the advantages to our approach are, are multiple. First of all, by fixing the F, D, and C pipes, we will be able to also repair our streets in a much more reliable and predictable fashion because we won't have to worry about the sewers underneath those streets. Within the two-year period that we'll be constructing these improvements, after that's done, we will know that if we go and resurface a street, we won't have to dig it up in another year or two to repair a sewer lines. So that would be one advantage. Another advantage is the low interest loan that we're going to be getting from the state. The inflation rate pretty much equals the interest rate, so therefore we're not really paying for the loan itself. We'll have to repay the principal. This will also provide an opportunity for employment, hopefully to our, our local citizenry as a result of this, uh, this construction project, which is going to be significant in our area. And it will reduce spills of sewage into the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which we're standing right next to. Well, it's important to do that now so that, so that residents and businesses have predictability in what their expenses are going to be. Um, none of us like rate increases, but I think the, the rate increases we like the least are when you have a rate increase and then five years later you have another surprise rate increase because something happened that people didn't plan on. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to take care of all the problems that we know of that we think are going to result in a, in a, in a uh, spillage of sewage in the next 20 years. So we'll have a very reliable system and our costs will be very much stabilized because of this. The city infrastructure that we all take for granted today was built and paid for by previous generations of Monterey citizens. Our infrastructure is aging and in imminent need for repair and renovation. It is our responsibility to pass this infrastructure along to future generations in as good, if not better shape than we received it. That will take time, money, and community will to fund these projects that protect Monterey's future. Visit the Plans and Public Works Department pages at monterey.org for more information.